In this video, we're going to talk about LEDs, light emitting diodes, diodes that convert electrical energy into light energy. These devices, they stay cool. They're not like other lamps that generate a lot of heat. So they're very efficient at converting electrical energy into light energy. Now let's talk about the polarity of an LED and how to connect it in a circuit. So notice the two leads of the LED. The long side is the anode. You want to connect that to the positive terminal of a battery. The short side is the cathode. So that should be connected to the negative terminal of a battery. Now, of course, you want to put a current limiting resistor in series with the LED and the battery. Otherwise, if too much current is flowing through this LED, it could burn up, which can be a problem. So just keep that in mind. Here is the electrical symbol of a regular diode. To draw the electrical symbol of a light emitting diode, simply put two arrows emanating away from it. On the left side, we have the positive terminal and on the right side, the negative terminal. So the positive terminal is the anode of the LED. The negative terminal is the cathode. Now, when current flows from the anode to the cathode, this is conventional current, the LED will be on if the voltage is sufficient to turn it on. If you apply current in the opposite direction, the LED will be off. Like all diodes, the LED will allow current to flow in one direction, that is from the anode to the cathode, but it will block current from flowing in the other direction. If you're considering buying an LED for an electronics project, there are three things you need to take into consideration. The forward voltage drop of the LED, which for a green LED, that's typically around 2.2 volts. Now this could vary depending on how much current is flowing through the LED. And we'll talk more about that later. The next thing is the maximum recommended current that should be flowing in the LED. Some LEDs can hold a current of 20, some can hold or manage a current of 30. Now, if you apply a higher current, the LED could burn out or it may work for some time and then burn out later, depending on the magnitude of the current. The next thing is the luminous intensity. The luminous intensity tells you how bright the LED will be. The LED that I was using in the picture that you saw earlier had a luminous intensity between 15,000 and 20,000 millicandelas. 1,000 millicandelas is equal to one candela. So that's another thing you need to consider. So the forward voltage, the maximum recommended current, and the luminous intensity are things that you may want to look at when buying an LED. Consider this circuit. Let's say we have a 9-volt battery connected to a resistor and a light emitting diode in series with each other. And let's say that the voltage drop of the light emitting diode is 2.2 volts. And the recommended maximum current is 20 milliamps. But let's say we want a current of 10 milliamps to flow through this light emitting diode. With this information, what is the value of the resistor that we should use to limit the current that is flowing in a circuit? So assuming that the voltage drop is 2.2, it could change based on the current. Here's what we need to do. So this is the ground, which we're going to assign it a potential of zero volts. Let's call this point A and point B. Now point B is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. So point B is at a potential of nine volts. Point A is at a potential of 2.2 volts due to the voltage drop of the LED. Now, in order to calculate the resistance of the resistor that we need, we need to use Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. Voltage is equal to current multiply by the resistance. So to solve for R, we need to divide both sides by I. So the resistance is equal to the voltage divided by the current. The voltage across the resistor is the potential difference between points A and B. So it's the potential of B minus the potential of A divided by the current flowing through the resistor. We know the potential at B is nine volts. The potential at A is 2.2 volts, and the current that is flowing through the resistor is 
well, at least the current that we want, which is 10 milliamps. Now we need to convert that to amps. One amp is equal to 1,000 milliamps. So to convert milliamps to amps, divided by 1,000. 10 divided by 1,000 is 0 0.01. So we have a current of 0 0.01 amps flowing in the circuit. 9 minus 2.2 .2 is 6.8. 6.8 divided by 0.01 is 680. So for this particular circuit, if we use a 680 ohm resistor, and if the voltage drop is 2.2, .2, then the current that will be flowing in this circuit will be 10 milliamps if the voltage of the battery is 9. So that's how you could determine the appropriate resistor to use in an LED circuit. First, look at the product label to determine the forward voltage drop of the LED, determine the voltage of the battery that you want to use, and then the amount of current that you want to flow in a circuit, taking into account the maximum recommended current. And then with that information, you can use this formula to determine the appropriate resistor to use. Now let's talk about the relationship between the forward voltage of the LED, that is the voltage drop across it, and the amount of current that is flowing in a circuit. So for this experiment, I chose to use four D cells, which when I tested it, the voltage wasn't six volts. It was a little bit less. It was 5.51. And, uh, I made a table with R, I, and then the voltage across the LED as measured by a multimeter. So when I chose a value of 10 kilo ohms for the resistor, the voltage across the LED was measured to be 2.22 volts. Now to calculate the current, it's going to be the voltage of the battery, 5.51, minus the voltage drop of the LED. So this will give you the voltage across the resistor, divided by the 10 kilo ohm resistor. So 5.51 minus 2.22, that's a voltage of 3.29 volts. If you divide it by 10 kilo ohms, you'll get 0.33 milliamps. It's actually 0.329, but I'm going to round it to 0.33. Now, when using a 5.1 kilo ohm resistor, I have a calculated current of 0.59 milliamps, but the voltage across the LED was 2.27. Now, notice what happens as the current flowing in a circuit increases. What pattern do you see? So notice that the voltage drop, that should be a 510 ohm resistor. Notice that the voltage drop uh, across the LED is increasing. When I use a 510 ohm resistor, the voltage is now 2.57. Now when using a 220 ohm resistor, the current flowing in the circuit is now 12.4 milliamps and the voltage across the LED is 2.78 volts. And then the last one I chose to use was an 82 ohm resistor. And I got a current of 29.8 milliamps and the voltage is 3.07 volts. So let's talk about what's happening here. As the resistance of the circuit decreases going from 10 kilo ohms all the way down to 82, the current flowing in the circuit increases, as we can see, it went from 0.33 milliamps all the way to 29.8 milliamps. And as the amount of current that's flowing through the LED increases, the forward voltage drop across the LED increases as well. So even though the recommended forward voltage is 2.2 volts for a green LED, that can change based on how much current is flowing through it. So if you have a lot of current flowing through the LED, the voltage drop will be larger than what you think it will be. So for a typical green LED, the voltage drop will be somewhere between 2 and 3.2 volts. Now for this particular LED, the recommended maximum current is 20 milliamps. 
I've exceeded that in this example, and the LED was very, very bright. Chances are it's not going to sustain this current for long. If I would have kept it at 29.8 milliamps, eventually it's going to burn out. But ideally, you want to keep it under this number. As the current flowing through the LED increases, the luminous intensity, the brightness, is going to increase. So that's it for this video. Hopefully, it gave you a good introduction into LEDs and how to use them.